I will thank you forever because of what you have done. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you who are said to blow like the wind across the waters and in our lives, you who are said to burn like a fire to bring light, to purge and renew, you are who are said to be so close and caring, so guiding and so, so sharing the things of Christ. We gather to be together, to be enlightened, to praise and be grateful, to be changed and challenged, to be set forth into this, this week and this life as people of Jesus. So bless us again in presence and in power. Amen. You may be seated. I'm on my own up here today, and I knew I would be, because Don was planning to be away, and he had a wedding yesterday in the valley, and was going to be with his parents visiting today. But unfortunately, Don got quite ill yesterday, Don Miller, and couldn't perform the wedding he was to perform, and he's in the Amherst Hospital now in the intensive care. So we'll keep him in our prayers today, and I'll talk a little more about that at our children's time in just a moment. Um, so before we do that, we'll sing a couple verses of this old children's hymn, uh, Praise Him, Praise Him. I wasn't accustomed to being so high and lifted up in my last church, but it's a good view, as you might know. I hope you all get a chance to read up there once in a while. I'll, I'll be calling on all of you eventually. Well, today, one thing that will happen from up there is the scripture readings today, and one of them, as almost always, is an epistle or a letter. So it's like we're reading someone else's mail, right? I mean, it was, we don't know the guy who wrote it, do we? I mean, that was a long time ago. And uh, it's not written to the Amherstians. Are you an Amherstian if you're from Amherst? What are we? 
Oh, we're Anerstonians, okay. It's not the letter to the Anerstonians we're going to hear from. We're going to hear from the letter to the Colossians. They lived in Colossae, which is, what's well, a far away anyway. But it's amazing. We're listening to someone else's, reading someone else's mail, but it's still meant for us because there's something special about it. I got some, some mail today of other kinds. Like I got, look, Kevin gave me this. Merry Christmas. But it, it was, it was, a, it was a, a note attached to something he gave me. He gave me a list of some things which I really wanted. And then, and then Don, dear Don, who's in the hospital right now, he, uh, he was going to be away, so he sent us a nice postcard with a message about what he was doing this weekend. A little did he know he'd have to have some healing and some blessings. So we're going to we'll pray for him in a moment. But he, uh, little Don did send hugs and kisses in this postcard to us. And so, uh, so I made up, some of you saw already, I made up a, a card for little Don to uh, hopefully I can get that to him at, in intensive care. I don't know if they'll let me in, but maybe they'll let the letter go in um, with a little cartoon. I thought he should have a cartoon on the front that was making fun of the situation, but anyway. But I will, uh, I will take that back out to the foyer after the service, and if you want to sign sign and put a little note there as well, and then I'll take that off to the hospital at noontime. So these, little, these cards and letters mean so much at times, and uh, whether we're reading the letters in scripture or we've got a note to one another, uh, this kind of communication is pretty special. Anyway, let's do a little communication of prayer, especially for, uh, I guess you call him Reverend Don, right? They called me Pastor Jeff where I was before. I like being called whatever, but we'll, we'll pray for uh, Reverend Don. Holy Jesus, you we call the great physician sometimes, a person of healing, the God of healing. So we ask for your blessing for whatever is going on with Don Miller. But we're grateful that he's in our local hospital getting intensive care, all this care that he needs. May he go from strength to strength with every, with every possible blessing that could be given to him there. And we extend our own blessing by your grace and mercy, Jesus, that when our hearts and hands reach to him, yours does also. And by your spirit, you will bless Dawn in body and spirit. This we ask in your name. Amen. Uh, let's sing that last stanza. <laughs> We have a prayer of confession printed in the bulletin uh, for, our, for our use today. So let's prepare to speak this, this prayer and then seek the promise of pardon. Praying, we say, Creator, the songs of this temple speak our joy and hope, yet we are about to hear from the Holy Word and be warned. As we see baskets of summer fruit, we admit our gluttony. As we see summer holidays, we admit our slothfulness. As we see the old words of the Bible, we admit our inattention. Heal our hardened hearts, we pray, and inspire our faith. Dear lover of our souls, for the sake of the world, set us out freshly reconciled to you and to one another. Amen. Let us be comforted and be glad and remember the tidings of the gospel. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son that whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish, but have the eternal life. Well, we turn now to these scripture texts, and I'm so grateful for 
Reverend Susan Gamblin, who I've just met last Sunday here, to be sharing uh, our first two texts today. Shall we bow our heads? <coughs> oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again, like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentations. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east, they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. 
And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, let us sing hymn 145. <laughs> The Gospel lesson this morning is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Jesus visits Martha and Mary. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. 
But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. going to ask, did the, is the recording working? Sharon, is the recording working? It is, okay. I was going to record an audio if it, it wasn't. I don't have to do that. You've got it held together. Well, we've enjoyed strawberries and now another, the other succession of, of summer fruit will be, will be coming forth, won't it? The Blueberries, the raspberries, the blackberries, the gooseberries, the plums, the, the whatever. Yum, yum, you might say to certain ones that are your favorites. Well, once upon a time, things were falling apart for the people of God in Israel. And the prophet Amos warned them. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. In the Hebrew language, basket of fruit and the end are two words that sound quite a lot alike. That's what's going on there. Uh, chaos and case. I don't know any Hebrew really. The prosperous people in that day and age were about to fall, and they had been prosperous, at least the ones at the top among God's people. The rich people, though, were oppressing the poor, as we could hear in the reading, and were greedy for making it rich. When you read from such prophets as Amos, we get a glimpse in those word pictures about the fall of a nation and things truly falling apart. But things are moving in the opposite direction, in the New Testament today, as we heard words about Christ holding all things together, reconciling things, all things. Colossians has this grand language about the Son of God holding all things together. So do we see this? Do we know it? And do we, do we show it? The first of my three points today really is to say that Christ does hold together all creation. Let me start by speaking in the style of Amos in those days. This was, and this was really inspired by looking at the discoloration of our, of our two buildings. This is what the Master God showed me. A gray crust on the red sandstone church. God said, Jeffrey, what do you see? And I said, lichens, lichens growing on the stone. Then God said to me, a new beginning is coming up on my people. Teamwork and cooperation, like the symbiosis of fungi and algae in the lichens that start growing on bare rock. There's a bringing of things together that happens when a lichen grows on a rock. Well, it was the author of the Bible book Colossians who wrote of Christ, he himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In Christ Jesus, all things hold together. The Bible is a very, I'd say, a very human uh, book, mostly about us, humans, and for us. Christianity is a human religion, all aimed at people for the most part. Yeah, we get this message again and again, all creation is involved. We call God creator. 
Christ is part of creating also, from the beginning, before all things. <clears throat> Without exploring it re deeply right now, I wonder, I wonder about this phrase that suggests the death of Jesus is for much more than getting rid of our sins. It's about the whole world, the universe, where it says, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Our day-to-day -day activities as part of the environment are a large aspect of our walk with God. Uh, so I'm interested in where Christ leads us in this. I'm going to meet with someone next this week to hear about the Shignecto Naturalists Club, which apparently needs a new beginning and some new leadership. <clears throat> So let me know uh, how interested you are in nature. Not that I'm going to recruit you to be on the executive, but I want to go on field trips with you. In congregations, I've always, <coughs> I've always dreamed of creating a new goal each year that, that we would then celebrate at Earth Day in, in April. You know, such as, you know, we become a model of recycling and garbage and composting at the church. And then, and then for the next year's goal, we, we learn how to use a lot less paper. Um, like I always say, paper doesn't grow on trees. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll mean, I mean that. Anyway. Is our Jesus holding all things together on this planet somehow? And can we be better, we be better team members with Christ to bless all living things? Colossians 1 uh, mentions the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. Now, perhaps the author meant every human creature, but there's more to it than that, I suppose. Let us be people with good news for all creatures, great and small. As Francis of Assisi supposedly said, preach the gospel to every creature, and if you must, use words. The jumping off point for my second assertion today is Colossians 1, verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church. What does Jesus do? Hold together the church. And we do need some holding together, don't we, in the world. Within the hour, we'll be singing here that old hymn, The Church is One Foundation. I think the Anglicans were singing it already this morning, weren't they, Kevin? He told me. Kevin's playing for the Anglicans this summer across, across the park here. And I've always liked the Church's One Foundation, but maybe, maybe less so now than years ago. The language is quite dated. Um, the Church is she, and God is he, and man is the troublemaker. Um, but it's, that's all quite biblical imagery, though, I must admit. But, and to me, the message of the hymn is, is idealistic, and realistic at the same time. You know, we sing in one verse, elect from every nation, yet one, or all the earth. But we'll also sing, though with a scornful wonder, men see her sore oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed. I guess that's all true today. There was a holding together of the Christian church by Christ throughout time and space. To be with Jesus is to be with everyone who is also in Christ. I have said before, there's a real miracle in this, that humans can belong together and be one. It takes an act of God. And what is our part? To live by it, to live into it, to, to learn our part. We are one thanks to God. So we act like it. Now let me take time in the middle of things here to read you a story. The story of Saphed the Sage. I don't know if you've heard stories of Saphed the Sage before or not. Stories by William, <coughs> pardon me, by William Barton, who uh, were published about 100 years ago right now, that he wrote then. And uh, these stories about Saphed, who's kind of an old-fashioned preacher, 
And back 100 years ago, they were written to be even more old-fashioned. And it's, to me, it's kind of an endearing style of storytelling, an old-fashioned style. So this story is called The Private Car, which I'm, I'm coming to enjoy in a town where the train still goes by. Here's the story. There is a certain man whose abiding place is a city where there is a great railway station, even a terminal. And this man determined within himself that he would go upon a journey. So he walked unto the terminal, and he bought a ticket, and he paid the fare. And he presented the ticket at a gate where stood a watchman. And the watchman punched his ticket and spake unto him, saying, The train is already on track number six. And he beheld the cars, and they were filling up rapidly. And he said, Behold, they will all be crowded, and I shall suffer discomfort. And he beheld the last car, which was nearest unto the gate. And behold, there was no one in it. And he said, This I will do. I will go into that car, and I shall have abundant room. So he went within, and he had all the room he wanted, even the whole car. And he smiled within himself when he thought of the other passengers who were jammed into the other cars. And while he was hugging himself for joy and considering what a smart guy he was, behold, the train pulled out and left him and his private car standing upon the track. And he rushed out and spake angrily unto the watchman. And he said, Wherefore am I left behind? And the watchman said, that is an extra car which we keep on the track to use in case there be a greater crowd than we expect. But today there was no great crowd. Yea, and there had been room enough for thee in one of the other cars that went, but thou didst, not, thou didst want more room, and thou hast all the room in sight. Yea, and upon the side track, out in the yard, are many empty cars. Thou canst take thy seat in any one of them. But if thou, <coughs> if thou desirest to ride unto the city for which thy ticket re readeth, behold, there will be another train in four hours and fifteen minutes. And take heed that thou enter the cars that go. <laughs> now this I beheld, for I was in the station, even the terminal, and I saw that man, yea, and I heard that man, and what I heard was a plenty. And I considered that often I am caught in the jam of life, with people crowding and pushing, and it were much more comfortable to find a quiet seat in some rear car where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are at rest. But I considered how that if a man is to get anywhere, he must go with folks, even though they crowd, and that no one can do very much without the companionship and help of other people. Therefore, I did resolve to keep out of the private cars that do not go or get a person anywhere, but learn the art of going and working with other folk. For I've seen that for the lack of the ability to do this, some people are left on the track in their own private car while the enterprises of life move on. The end. I believe the faith we share here today is indeed a shared thing. For all of life is a shared thing. Our core hope and mission is about reconciliation, being held together, belonging. Your task and mine is to take our own steps in that direction. This brings me to conclude with my final point today. Christ also lives to hold together you and God. We have these words from Colossians 1. You he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. As you may well know, it is the work of God to connect us to God's self. We get drawn in. The, the divine relationship gets healed. It is about the human soul and the Holy Spirit. The amazing things we have been given and that we give to the world 
are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glorious one who is in us holds all things together. Let us take a, a silent moment. As we pause for what we call congregational concerns, I used to call this, in other places, I called it celebration of ministry. I might change that in the bulletin, celebration of ministry, because I think all the things you might read in the bulletin, you could consider ministry, whether it's financial ministry or people in need of prayer or opportunities that are ours as ministry. Uh, so please take note of all the things that are in print here and uh, you can find things in bulletin boards and, and all over the place. And there's always lots of, I see there's lots of reading material that you never read or else you read it and you bring it back because there's tons of the spring bulletin of the uh, Canadian Association for Baptist Freedoms out there for you to read. Take it, read it, recycle it. Uh, <coughs> the photos and, and news that we got last week from our friends who are in Poland, the Pol Polichenko family. So there's quite a few of those leaflets available out in the foyer as well. Not to mention, I will put out there this Get Well card for, for Don Miller. Uh, in the cartoon, you, there's a, you'll see it. There's a, a doctor talking to two patients who are in the same hospital bed. And he says, look, as soon as a private room becomes available, you'll get one. So we'll hope for that and all the better for Don Miller. But please take note and make the most of these opportunities that, as you see here. Uh, is there anything in particular I should say out loud that I haven't about upcoming things and so forth? Okay. Then let us take a little time for some more praying. Let us pray. O oh God who speaks in words and actions, We've listened for you together. Show yourself again each day of this week. Hold us. Hold us together. Hold this world together. Hold together those who are in our prayers. We do pray for those who are having a hard time holding it together, dear Master. You know what we mean. In the anxieties, in the illnesses, amid the emotional injuries and traumas, let there be peace, your peace. And make us channels of your peace for all who are troubled. Healer of our every disease, with loving care, please bless those who look for healing, who struggle with pain, or are limited by disease or injury. We keep praying for our caretaker, Jimmy, still in Truro Hospital. Put him at rest and refresh his body. We pray now for Reverend Don in Amherst Hospital after a day of sickness yesterday. Oh, have mercy and give healing to him and to all whom we bring before you now. We pray, as always, for those who mourn, thinking especially again of the families of Marge Skinner, and also of Jessica DeLorme and others. As families are gathering, gathering to give thanks for loved ones, we rejoice today in these lives that have been lived and have shone with your glory. Savior of the nations, of all peoples, we call out for the people of Ukraine as the disasters of war carry on. We call out for the people of Japan after the assassination of their former prime minister. We call out for Sri Lanka amid the civil unrest and protests. And for the whole world, in your hands, we pray. 
beautiful creator, as we come in from the grand summer sky above us, send us out into this week with awe and wonder. Inspire again our loving care for our earth and all the creatures on it. Teach us and train us to be good ancestors for all who will follow. In the name of the Alpha and Omega, Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, let us sing this old hymn. I think we have, we have five stanzas there. I was going to get ambitious and creative and make you a choir and get... You know, the women to sing one verse, and then, or the Uniteds to sing one verse, and the Bapt, I'm not going to do that to you. Let's just sing as you see fit. The church is one foundation. Now, love in all sincerity, loathing evil and holding fast to the good. 
Let the love of the Christian community show itself in mutual affection. Esteem others more highly than yourself. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Charism be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
like that. 